Bird rule on their side is Senators Lee, Tillis, Blackburn, and Cruz. Uh, it appears, Senator Tillis, you're next up. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you all for being here. I, I listened to your testimony and watched it in my office. Uh, Mr. Rosenthal, you're getting married in a, in a, a couple of weeks? Yes, Senator. I also uh, wish that your uh, father returns to good health. Thank you. Um, Captain Thomas, thank you for your law enforcement service and your service in Iraqi freedom. Um, Ms. McCollum, I, uh, I think this is the first time I've asked somebody questions who were actually a plaintiff in a Supreme Court case. Uh, it's an honor. Um, your testimony <clears throat> was uh, unbelievable. Before I leave today, I hope I can get one of your cards. I think oh, it reads sure. Hope, Health, and Love. <laughs> hope, uh, Health, and Love. Um, so you were at this abortion clinic uh, as a counselor. Yes. Sidewalk counselor. Um, yesterday, I tried to make the distinction because I think some people were approaching that case as a pro-life or pro-choice case, and I was trying to make the point it was about uh, freedom of speech. You agree with that? I think you said that in your testimony. Sure. Now, in the amicus brief that was created, I think there were quotes in there. So these weren't words necessarily of those who created the amicus brief, but they were quotes from, I guess, um, the, the plaintiffs in the, in the original case that uh, you were mean, uh, in your face, uh, aggressive. And I think that the other quotes said that they even felt like they may be shot by you. Now, I know that was a couple of years ago, but that seems to be not characteristics of your behavior. Would you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. What, yeah. would, can you, you were out there, you, yeah. you were not the only one were there others out there as life counselors or? Sure. Yeah. Were, were any of them mean, in your face people that looked likely to shoot somebody? No, absolutely okay. not. So tell me a little bit about the bound. I'm sorry, I got to go quick because I'd like That's to hear okay. you talk. I'd like for you to repeat your opening statement. Um, but um, tell me about the, the um, I was trying to get with Judge Jackson yesterday, who incidentally, Congresswoman, I think is eminently qualified. And, and I find it hard to believe that anybody on my side of the aisle would disagree with that. So this has more to do with the application of philosophy and uh, worldviews that could potentially influence. But I, I think you should make no mistake that uh, I agree with the ABA that she is highly qualified, and I'm glad to see, see she got that rating. But the, 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 uh, I'm trying to get an idea of what it was like on the ground. They were telling you, now one of the reasons you mentioned in your testimony that you may have to raise your voice is you were so far away from these young expectant mothers who may not have ever known that there was a choice of life that right. would fulfill them like uh, the mother who sent you the picture of her three-month-old baby um, yes. who's now in her teens. So I could understand if you're several feet away, you may have to raise your voice just to get their attention. Maybe that's what they meant by shouting and in your face. But... Um, with the Supreme Court striking, ultimately striking down the underlying Massachusetts law that was used as a basis um, for the complaint, um, were there people that were inside the envelope or, or maybe, I, I was trying to determine whether there were people that were escorting them in, which are basically expressing their free speech rights to choice. Were they there or was it just that, I mean, so were there people inside the buffer who were able to escort them in, and your argument was that you want to be there to give hold their hand, I think you said, never walk the journey alone. Um, is that an accurate portrayal of the facts on the ground, that you felt like you were not given uh, uh, fair. fair access? Fair, that's true. Okay. Because, yes, you, you, you have it there, Senator. And, uh, yes, they are inside the buffer zone, and they're, all, they're talking to the mother-to-be, and That's what I thought. That's why I just we're wanted not, to get it right. Yes. And I think it's wonderful that you're here because um, uh, you're, you're either an Oscar-winning uh, actor or <laughs> actress or the fact of the matter is that was a wholly unfair assertion yeah. of who you were. Um, just a quick question. I actually had one for Ms. Russell and Ms. Mascot. I'm not going to have time for both. Uh, so, Ms. Mascot, you talked about in your opening testimony the application and practice. Um, I was thinking about a case that um, 
Senator Cornyn brought up that had to do with the, uh, the, the, the uh, congressional direction, the plain word of the statute said that the, the removal, the, t the two, are you familiar with this? Are you talking about Make the Road, New yeah. York? Yeah. Okay. And it was my understanding that Judge Jackson used as a basis for the uh, nationwide injunction that it did not comply with the APA, but that seems to be a tactic every once in a while, even though the plain letter of the text seemed like, um, and, and I think it's the reason why it was ultimately um, struck down by the D.C. Circuit. But uh, do you know of any other examples where Ms. Jackson may have uh, applied a similar logic uh, to a case? Well, in that particular case that you're speaking of, I think it was it was not, it failing to rely on a provision that clearly limited the, the role of the courts and gave the discretion to make the decision to the um, acting uh, Department of Homeland Security secretary. I think in other opinions, um, what seems to be the case is that Judge Jackson is using a blend of sources, perhaps relying on legislative history or looking at intent or purpose more than other justices in the past who have expressed exclusive commitment to textualism, or maybe um, in applying canons of construction, perhaps moving beyond text sometimes in a way that might be different from other justices in the past, like Justice Scalia and Thomas. So of course, it's hard to predict based on district court rulings how a judge will rule, but there are these other instances like the one you mentioned, or in the McGann case, um, well, where the DC Circuit disagreed. That sorry, suggests maybe- Sorry, in the, the interest of time, because yeah. I know we have a vote. Uh, I'd be very interested, thank you for that, uh, but I'd be very interested uh, as a follow-up, if you have time over the next week, to uh, just provide me a few specific examples if, if you can. You don't have to go to a great level of detail, but I would appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Chair, thank you. And Ms. McCollin, do you have one of those cards? I'm going to get it on the way out. Thank you. Thanks, Senator Tillis. Uh, 